by cloud, by using a, a service from a cloud ser a provider, we finally hid away the nasty parts of open source. That was a quote on a company using open source. There are s some parts that you don't really would like to know, and if you really read a small print on some open source, it's not that easy to always to use uh, as a company. And but if the cloud provider use, uh, let's say, Red Hat for all their their ha handling of their clusters, you don't have to m care as an end user because it's hidden behind the, the cloud provider. And that was a nice new way of looking at things that the cloud provider actually does. The cloud provider cares, of course, with their relation with the different licenses and they have, but you are just buying the final service that is provided by the cloud provider. You didn't make a contract with Red Hat to use this cloud provider. That was interesting, I think. It's, uh, uh, come back to this uh, more legal comment here on, on, on data. And of course, making sure that one can get the data out in, in some ordered form from a class that is, uh, <laughs> looks, uh, uh, yes, it looks. Here's uh, the ones uh, and here's the zeros. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some better, yeah. And we only need the ones because the <laughs> zeros we know. Empty <laughs> space. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, but seriously, if, if going back to my example there, let's say we, we sign up a contract here for all the Finnish universities to use uh, a cloud service provider and uh, they uh, store all the research data there. I mean, we are easily talking here about uh, petabytes and tens of hundreds of petabytes soon. Uh, so it becomes practically uh, not uh, simple to get the data out, even if we want to with any measure. Uh, so here we're talking really about vendor lock-in and uh, from pure practical reasons, even though we have maybe arranged it in some way, the only way to get it out is physically, maybe put uh, disks on a trailer and, and move them out of there. Uh, so there we, uh, we enter into another space because one should remember also, this is part of the business model of, of cloud computing for these companies. I mean, to, to build the really big data centers, get all the uh, scale uh, uh, benefit, benefits of the scale, and really, really aggregate data there. And because these centers are, the data centers are really optimized, all the hardware and systems there, they are optimized to turn around these big heaps of data. And uh, this is the whole business idea. So the idea is to aggregate data there. But we must, as customers, then understand what it means. Not only now, it's very handy and practical, but what does it mean in the future where this data just grows and grows and grows, because it will not uh, decrease. But I remember a discussion a few years ago about another kind of vendor locking, and that is what happens if there's a war between some Asian countries. We won't get any um, um, any any uh, micro any hardware to our computers because we don't have any uh, factories in Europe, and mm -hmm. maybe some in US. And to build a factory with the knowledge takes us a long time. So we would be out of computers at, at some degree for, for quite long. So we have already made some dec decisions here. And, um, what happens now if we suddenly start to use uh, cloud providers from outside Europe only, and then there is some 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 problem with the, on the political level, and suddenly all our scientific data is somewhere else? And let's start with paper and pen again. And I don't know. But th there, there are some other discussions that's really high level, but interesting. I think it's, uh, I didn't hear much. As a short comment, I, I don't think you have to be a con con. Uh, kind of uh, too suspicious of the U.S. government to, to make a conclusions that, that that any cloud service uh, uh, servers that are located in the U.S. Uh, they will have some kind of backdoor access to, for, by the U.S. government. Uh, there are lots of articles, legal articles, and, and in other fields showing that U.S. The U.S. government has has requested such backdoors from from a number of vendors already, and they will do it in the future. And there is no contractual means to avoid it. It doesn't matter what your agreement says. The U.S. government will bypass that agreement and say that we don't care about your agreement. We will do it anyways, and, and, and your service provider can't help it. 
Yeah, it, it's the US Patriot Act that uh, allows all this after 9-11. And as Swede, I can mention that if your data passed through Sweden, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs>
<coughs> not much to add. Um, I would like to add a wish, and that's if you look at security, there is a very nice, um, um, what do you say, effort from something called the Cloud Security Alliance. People from all over, uh, it's US, uh, there's a SNIA in, in Europe. Uh, companies who together try to figure out what's, def what's specific with cloud security compared to normal IT security, uh, what to think about when you go to the cloud, what to respect, uh, expect, what, what to really ask for, uh, and how to, to think. Um, I like it very much. It has a best practices. So you can look at 10 best practices, and then there's another document of all the way through how to think about things. What I would like to see is an SLA best practices. Maybe there is. Uh, I didn't find it yet. Something that you legal people can just agree, this is a typical SLA you could expect from a small company using a, this kind of s a cloud services, and of course together with some people like the CSA or whoever. That would be nice. That would save a lot of money. Okay, not your money, but our <laughs> money. <laughs> um, save it.